very short update because I've literally just heard of the death of a very good friend of mine and co-worker John Michael Dedeker who some of my friends will know from St. Louis and he passed away early November last year 2022 and I was trying to contact him this morning and that's how I found out that we've lost not just a very good personal friend but a real soldier and a servant of Christ Jesus in so many ways. And very, very briefly, I want to just say what a great privilege it was to me to know Michael, Mike. We shared a house together in uh, the outskirts of St. Louis, Missouri in Hazelwood back in the late 1970s and we saw a mini revival break out there from the house. Uh, we had a house fellowship running there and we would have teenagers and people in the young 20s come over and we'd go out and do outreach to St. Louis, the red light districts, to uh, downtown. We did a lot of drama together, Christian drama together with Carla and Rich, who sadly we lost Rich last year as well. So that's two people in our inner circle that we lost last year. And um, you can never recreate the past. We're not supposed to recreate the past, but we can honor the past and we can learn from the past. And uh, Mike and I were working together, uh, literally working together. We, I uh, shared my business with Mike and we worked together on, on restoring cars, car interiors. Uh, and that was uh, so much, that was so, so much fun. And also, of course, it supported the, the mini community we had. Uh, and then in the very late 70s, he was seriously considering coming back to England with me to do mission work in the United Kingdom. And I went back and he went to Rhema Bible College. Um, and that's the last time I actually met him personally. We've been in contact until around 2015. And Mike went on some short term missions back then and got really involved in. Uh, he passed at a church. Um, and was involved in missions and one of the sweetest, most gentle giants I've ever met in my life. Um, I'll never forget the time when a whole bunch of saints came into our house, young Christians, and they brought this young believer in, a lady. You know, we had a house rule. Anybody could come to the house, but no females staying overnight. That was our house rule that Mike and I had agreed on together because we shared the house. And uh, a whole bunch of what we called the West County Saints came one night after witnessing. They brought a friend in who had a job working in the local mall, but she didn't have a house to stay in. And so they said to Mike and me, can, look, you know, we've got a problem here. Can she stay? So Mike and I looked at each other and we had a spare bedroom in the house. So we said, we're going to pray about it. And we went down our corridor and Mike went to his bedroom and I went into my bedroom. Now Mike was over six foot tall so I always have to look up to him. And after about five minutes, we both happened to come out of our bedrooms at the same time. And we collided with each other just about and looked at each other in the eyes and you're looking up at Mike and... I said to Mike, is the Lord telling you the same thing he's telling me? And he nodded. And we didn't even have to say anymore. And this particular individual who's still a very good friend of ours on uh, communicating quite regularly via Facebook and so forth, she became a perm permanent fixture 
in our community bless her um another time we were in prayer because we said anybody can come to our fellowship at home anytime 24 7 as long as you come to fellowship to pray to go out and go out and to win souls for christ but you know you're welcome it's an open house there's nothing we're not hiding anything and um so one night there's about eight or ten of us in prayer and the lord took us in really what was a uh, a closed vision situation we were actually in saint peter's square in rome and i was preaching in saint peter's square and this was years before i was a catholic of course i was preaching in saint peter's square and we had a pizza on in the oven and um all of a sudden the spirit lifted off of us and we came back to where we were and i realized hey we've got a pizza being cooked and i went into the kitchen turned the oven off and the pizza was perfectly cooked we ate the pizza and then went back into prayer it was quite amazing i'm not sure if it was the same time that we had this closed vision of rome or another time but the other remarkable thing was when we were about eight or ten of us praying and I, in in this closed vision, I was preaching and I could see all my friends around me. And when we came out of the prayer situation, uh, we exchanged what we'd all been seeing. And we'd all been seeing the same thing. And the remarkable thing was that even positionally, we were all seeing the same thing from our own particular perspectives from where we were standing in St. Peter's Square. And... Uh, that was one of the most remarkable spiritual experiences I've ever had. Of course, Michael Dedeker was right there with us on that, as were other people who I'm not going to name on this video, but I know who they are. And, you know, I've often thought about that. And I think that now all these years later, um, being a witness within the Catholic community is in a sense of fulfillment of at least a partial fulfillment of what we saw on that night as a result of that prayer during that mini revival and there's revival happening across america today and um i'm really glad about it i believe this is genuine revival i know that mike didick would approve if he was there rich real would approve if he was here and all of our friends would approve of it because there's a genuine repentance and faith toward god and people's lives being changed from the inside i've for years said uh in fact that's one of the main guiding principles of my ministry through the last 50 years has been that it's the inner transformation that is the miracle that we all need and i've seen people running off after miracles and god is doing this and the other thing and all sorts of of uh, outward expressions of faith but it's the inner attitude of heart that gets converted and changed that's the real miracle that happened to me 50 years ago that happened to john michael Dedeker many years ago it happened to our friends in st louis so many years ago and i know that if mike was with me right here today he'd be urging us all to step back from ourselves for a moment and to consider our relationship with God, to know that God loves you intensely and that he has good for you, not evil, and that the convoluted mess that we often find ourselves in in our lives, Jesus is the answer. He's the undoer of knots. He's the one who is the resurrection and the life and so i'd encourage you along with my brother mike if he was here to just come to christ don't run from him come to the lord jesus and allow him to embrace you with whatever you're going through right now so i just shared this simple message with you um and i'm dedicating it to the memory of john michael Dedeker. 1955 i think to 2022 and thank you lord jesus for the 
number of years of incredible fellowship we shared together, the incredible community you allowed Mike and I to uh, have oversight of and responsibility for right at the end, tail end of the Jesus movement in the United States of America. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. God bless you.